you know, there's a lot of questions when you scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and keep scrolling and there's still questions. Well, it's that time again, folks. It is this week's Yawa time. And we are here again to answer your questions. Uh, We're going to get today started off right with a big question about aggression. Brandon Dalton, ever have aggression issues? I have a 12 month old male GSP that has um, that is aggressive towards strangers, male, female, even kids. We're trying to do something positive when strangers come like play fetch, which he loves to do after 20 minutes of fetch next to a stranger. If we stop and they stick out their hand and barks and charges them. Okay. Any other ideas? Well, first of all, I want to say that most aggression issues are not going to be able to be fixed based on this and through this kind of communication. But I can tell you um, a huge, 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 huge majority of aggressive-ish tendencies and what you're talking about here. Um, they are not aggressive based as much as they are fear based. Now it's still fear aggression, but it's probably more due to an apprehension of new people, new things. Um, the biggest thing that we would want to do is for you to reach out with to us with some more information on this. Um, but again, even just based on the few things that you're saying here, this sounds more fear based or apprehension based, not um, you know, protective or aggressive based. So uh, reach out to us and we will try and help. And just one thing that I'm gonna throw out there, that's why we stress socialization so much is because it prepares these dogs for new environments, new people, new things. Um, And when they're socialized well, especially starting as a puppy, that's gonna allow them to adapt to new situations and not be startled or unsure or fearful of those situations. And it can definitely help get you off on the right foot, but it definitely sounds like at this point um, with your 12 month old that we may be past the initial fix this with socialization and we need to get more information at this point. May need to even go as far as seeing a behavioralist or specialist that would deal with these specific things. Facebook question. Thanks for asking. Next question from Facebook. You see, we're switching it up a little bit. We've been starting a lot of the Yawas with Instagram questions. Now we're like giving the love to some Facebook people first. So Jeff Justice, I have a four month old male GSP. He's very smart and doing well with basic commands. He's been in our home for two months now and he is struggling with house training. We are very consistent and take him out regularly, but he still pees in the house. Any suggestions? Um, Again, not a cop out, but definitely going to need a little more information um, because First of all, he's four months old, he's still a puppy, so give him a little bit of slack, but there's a lot of things that could be involved from being too distracted when he's outside to fully empty his bladder. Um, Sometimes puppy go out and they pee, and then they're done peeing, and then they're like, okay, let's go inside, and you need to say, wait, 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 I think you need to try one more time to empty your bladder and get him to pee again, and then they're like, oh, and then they fully empty their bladder. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. Um, And then they can come back in. And that's not always indicative of a UTI or anything like that. It's just in- indicative of a puppy with um, puppy, puppy brain. brain. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, squirrel. Um, so give them more time. Um, help them to be less distracted when they're outside going to the bathroom. But also keep in mind, if you let your puppy outside to run around in the backyard to go potty, and then 20 minutes later you go get them and bring them inside, who knows when the last time was they pottied. They may have pottied right when they went outside, but then for the next 20 minutes didn't. Then they come inside, and puppies are on kind of like that 30-minute need-to-pee schedule when they're out and running around. Um, and then they're going to pee on the floor in the house because it's you know time for that. Yeah. Um, Aside from just uh, let outs and schedule alone, you can run into other things like amount of water intake and when they're actually drinking water. And then um, lastly, she mentioned, uh, I didn't see it in here, there there could be the potential of a UTI or bladder infection or something and that's what's causing the struggle. But again, we need a little more information. Put it down below. Next question. And I think this is really funny. It's from Instagram now, and the person had to say, cat, it's not UN guided fly, it's unguided fly. I'm a fly fisherman who doesn't like being guided. 
I get it now. Sorry, like we say, we but we butcher hashtags all the time, especially when we're reading through them quick. It's just like, what do they mean by this? But okay, question. With puppies, how many training sessions do you do per day? Videos seem to be two, one at the morning feeding and one at the evening feeding. And do you do the, se do the sessions every day? How else do you break up their day? Percent of time in the crate, percent of time unstructured play, etc. Got an 11 week old who's tracking great with our videos. Glad you're liking the videos. House broke, kennel, crate, and bed, sit, recall to click and treat. They play fetch three to four reps every few days, walks in field and neighborhood daily. That's about it. Is that too little, too much for now? Um, and then they said based on Fox Brig that, cause I plan it um, to enter the collar at about 14 weeks, which it looks like is in about three weeks from now. Any other advice? Well, I have to say, um, it sounds like you are right on track with everything yeah. that you're doing. You're doing a really good job. Um, every puppy is different. And if you watch some of our series, you'll see that and how we have to interact with those puppies and how we have to manage those training sessions. Some of our puppies um, were a little less food motivated. So we had to make sure that their meals were their training sessions. We couldn't no. do midday training sessions if they'd already gotten a meal. So percent of time training and when to train and things like that really is a little bit more dependent on your specific puppy. But if you're doing two sessions a day, one in the morning, one in the evening, and that's working great. Um, continue that, you know, we always say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You're doing everything right. You're making progress. Um, I would say you're doing a great job, but typically with our puppies, our daily routine, and we don't like to use the word schedule necessarily is because I don't want it to be a schedule that at 6 a.m. puppy goes out at 6.30, puppy gets fed at 6.45, they go out to go potty um, because life happens and things can't always be exactly on a schedule. So it's, hey, puppy has the expectation that they go out first thing in the morning after they come out of their crate go potty, come inside, get a little bit of play time. Um, then typically for us, we don't like to feed first thing in the morning because puppies anticipate that. So then they start going, oh, I'm going to wake up a little earlier so I can get breakfast sooner. And I'm going to wake up a little earlier. And then you're at 2 a.m. and they're like, breakfast? So... <laughs> <laughs> we try and wait to do their feeding until we've been up and about for quite a while. They've been back in their crate. They come out, we do a training session with food. Then it's um, back outside. And then it's quite a bit of crate time for the rest of the mid morning because we're working. Um, whether we're training dogs, shooting videos like this, um, traveling, hunting, replying to emails, all that stuff. We can't have the distraction of a puppy and setting yourself up and your puppy for success is important. If you can't watch them, you don't know when they're chewing stuff up or peeing and pooping on the floor. Um, so we use crate time for those times where we can't be distracted by a puppy. Then another time, anytime they come out of their crate, it's back outside to go to the bathroom first, then inside playtime. And I would say at young puppy ages, there's more of that unstructured play percentage wise than structured training sessions because they have very little focus yeah. um, and attention at that point. Um, but we also make sure that that unstructured play isn't escalating into craziness in the house. Um, they're not chewing up things they're not supposed to be chewing up. They're not wrestling with the other dogs. So though it's unstructured, it still is monitored and we have expectations that it doesn't get carried away. Um, and then we do like free runs and things like that, which aren't necessarily structured formal training sessions, but that's also important um, for physical exercise for the puppies. And teaches them how to hunt. Yep. And then we do some relaxing in the evening where we sit on the couch, watch some TV if we have time and puppy gets to chill on the couch with us. But that's pretty much their day. I can't really break it down into actual percentages. Um, because the, it depends on every puppy too. Those evening sessions end up being more of a "you will love me" kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I just well, hold them TV, there till they fall asleep. Yeah, because they like to wiggle around and um, be energetic little puppies. So, great question. So, unguided fly question two: A GSP breeder trainer friend told me to do no training at all till I take her to him at four or five months. Saying most important thing is drive, and too much puppy training wears them out. That makes some sense, but as mentioned above, I'm following your puppy program with great success. Trainer told me to bang pots around her head as she eats her meals, her jackpot after her sessions, to help her have drive and not be afraid of noise. What do you think? So first of all, I don't want to say that your trainer friend's wrong or your um, breeder friend is wrong um, because we as breeders are breeding our puppies to be um, 
have certain personality traits and temperaments and things like that. So there are definitely differences in different lines and some puppies are slower to mature and they may not need more formal training until they're older. Um, but starting clicker training with your puppy at, you know, the day after you get them home is perfectly okay. Um, and it's a good thing to start building that motivation to work for treats and work for food. Now you can overdo it. And some puppies, you have to watch that if they're getting bored with sessions, maybe not doing two sessions a day, just doing one session with one of their meals. And then they just get to eat their next meal. Um, it just has to be, depend on what your puppy is showing you they're getting out of those sessions. Um, but we definitely start clicker training right away. Um, we, like you said in our videos, we start doing some of those birding gun intros and things like that earlier than four or five months old um, with our personal puppies. So it's personal preference on what you want to do. If you feel comfortable doing some of those things yourself, I definitely would. Um, the banging pots thing with your puppy eating, that's not something we ever do with our dogs. Um, we also don't really struggle with having dogs be gun shy. I do gunfire introductions and that's during bird introductions typically. Um, once gun puppies... sensitivity issues are directly related to an under socialized dog. So it doesn't really have anything to do with noise. It has more to do with not being comfortable with change or differences or things like that. And that a well socialized dog isn't going to have issues with any of it so and on the other hand poorly timing those bangings of pots right over your puppy's head could have could the opposite problems. effect yeah. Yep. yeah um but the other side of it to keep in mind is we get dogs in for training all the time that have had basically no training done but those puppies typically come in at a minimum of six months old and they may not have had anything done so when your breeder friend says you know four to five months before um, you start anything or before they come to them is not abnormal either. And if there are a lot of people out there that don't necessarily know what they're doing or aren't following along with a video series and they make mistakes, um, I know at that point I would rather be one of those people that say, why don't you just not do anything until we get your puppy to work with it so you don't make a mistake um, if you're not you know, reaching out for professional help and things like that because I'd rather have you either follow along with a structured series like on our YouTube channel than go shooting clays over your puppy and cause sensitivity issues that then at six months old when they come in for training we have to fix. Okay, <laughs> on to the next question. Andy underscore camp about running in cold weather. When is it too cold for my lungs? I'm assuming this Instagram page belongs to a dog because I'm not good with human stuff. Um, but as far as too cold, how cold is too cold? I don't think you're going to run into an issue unless it's a big shock situation. For example, going from 75 degrees to negative something degrees, it's going to be a pretty big shock, but ultimately, um, the outside temperature and their body themselves is going to be what's more important. So it gets really cold, throw a neoprene breast and I'm talking sub freezing. Um, other than that, any dog that's conditioned should be fine. Next question from Nick Heberner. What are your must-haves in your truck, med kit, anything else you keep in your vest while hunting? Great question. Um, we've actually done a couple videos about packing and things like that. So definitely be looking around for the packing videos. But um, in the truck, we have water, we have our med kit, um, I carry food for travel, but when we're actually hunting itself, what does it say? What is the must haves in a truck med kit? Okay. <laughs> I was just like, duh, the med kit, but he wants to know what's in the med kit that are must haves. The med kit's in the med kit. A, a big thing that gets overlooked is uh, fluids, super important, stapler, very important. The, the stapler's either gonna fix your problem or it's gonna help you get someplace where it can get fixed. Um, some disinfectants, lap pads, gauze pads, bandages um, are good. As far as in my vest, I don't carry anything. We're rarely far enough away, and maybe I should. I've never run into a situation where it's slapped me in the face and said, hey, you should be carrying something. Um, we're usually close enough to the truck that I can get the dog back in a reasonable amount of time. If you're a long ways away, 
throwing a couple things in would be maybe a stapler is about the only thing you're going to really and some hemostats might be the two things that i would carry yeah and depending on where you're hunting i know that people hunt a lot of times around um where trapping happens so having some form of tool to help remove your and dog I've seen from snares and giant things like that. zip ties are a really good thing we don't actually ever hunt on public ground so i never have had to work we don't hunt on very much public ground so i haven't had to worry about trapping very often but um yeah Not giant good. zip ties we're talking like 18 inch big heavy duty zip ties are the way to get them out of conifers traps zip ties can be helpful um, but those would be the big ones. Hemostat, stapler is going to help get you back to the truck in most situations. Yeah, and I was going to just say something that gets also maybe missed is enough packing material um, for like gauze pads. Because if your dog has a serious laceration or uh, impalement, Lots of um, you're going to want to pack, especially if they get stuck on a stick or something. Don't pull that stick out. Um, you're going to want to wrap and pack around it so that stick isn't moving around. Um, and that you can put pressure on that wound so that you can get somewhere. Cause those are things that you're not going to fix in the field and having that, you don't know what packing, that stuck, stick stuck in. Yeah. And having that packing and wrapping and stuff is going to hopefully give you the time to get somewhere that that can be taken care of. So from G underscore 22 on Instagram, I'll be getting a puppy soon. And I am concerned about our chickens becoming Look at a problem. All those chicken well training and outside time the chickens are pinned most of the time suggestions so one thing to keep in mind is you are getting a bird dog therefore they have bird dog instincts which is prey driven those chickens are gonna typically in instigate that instinct to come out will it be a distraction yes can they overcome it yes, yes. Keeping them pinned up is a good idea, especially when your puppy's out so that they're not chasing the chickens because that is what they will do. Because the fun thing is when the puppy chases the chickens, they run away. Same with like people that have cats. You know, if the cat would just hang out there when the puppy's introduced to them and not run, that wouldn't push that prey drive into overdrive where they want to chase it then. So your chickens don't know to just stay there and let the puppy sniff them and then get over it. They're going to run away and that's going to make the game even more exciting. Um, and then I would say as your puppy goes through training and gets more mature and understands what important birds are, like game birds um, and pointing and how hunting goes and happens that the chickens are going to become less interesting, especially when they never get a chance to catch and kill one or interact with them that way. Yeah. As long as you don't put emphasis on it, they will desensitize to the Yeah, Don't go the woeing them on your chickens or anything like that. Even though uh, it might be cute that they're doing it right away when they're a puppy, just kind of ignore it. Or if they're just like zoned in, stuck on it, redirect their away. focus. Yep. yep. Redirect focus. Chickens are not important. And if you teach them that, they will understand. Next question here. We've got 09RO underscore ZA12 on Instagram says, have you ever had to train a dog? It seems unmotivated by food. Absolutely. Um, a big thing that we try and do is teach dogs to be motivated by food, which can often start as a puppy. A lot of dogs that we've seen, not saying this is the case with yours, but most of the dogs that we see that are unmotivated by food um, are overweight or... A little fluffy. 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 It's a nice way to say fat. Okay. A little fluffy. And uh, on top of that, have been allowed the opportunity to either a free feed or be something again having it available all the time makes it less exciting which is why we try and teach those eating habits by utilizing meals for training sessions when they're itty bitty puppies and picking up the food and taking it away if they're just they picking focus. at it and yeah. not and being too distracted to eat. We have had one or two dogs that are in good shape and have these just don't have desire for food. And you just have to find something that they are, are driven to work for. That could be praise, it could be retrieves, it could be any number of things. And it could be a special treat that they only get during training sessions instead of just trying to use their meal yeah. kibble for it. But We utilize train me treats. Um, there's a couple other companies that have stuff, but those are what we've spent. And they've got like bacon flavored dogs seem to like those that don't. And they're uh, really small. So the dogs can move yes. through the training still quickly and not lose momentum in that session. So, yeah. 
But I would say because we always have so many questions, so many great questions, and I will take um, some responsibility that I took up a lot of time with a couple of those questions. We're probably going to have to break now and come back for part two tomorrow with you guys. But um, thanks for asking all these great questions. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you tomorrow.